The quality of the health services will also depend on the health care providers carrying out the services. An adolescent-friendly health care provider is competent, courteous and respectful, rights-sensitive, gender and culturally responsive, flexible and open-minded, non-judgmental, willing to assure privacy and confidentiality, unhurried or gives adequate time for client-provider interaction, kind, approachable, concerned and interested, good communicator, good listener, and able to explain well. Having trained healthcare providers to work competently and sensitively with adolescents is often considered the single most important prerequisite for establishing adolescent-friendly services. Healthcare providers with good interpersonal skills can help adolescents feel at ease. Overbearing attitudes and behaviors on the part of the healthcare provider can cause adolescents to leave the clinic before they get the care they need, fail to comply with treatment requirements, and refuse or forget follow-up care. An adolescent-friendly health service should also consider privacy and confidentiality. Before we discuss the importance of ensuring privacy and keeping confidentiality, let us first define the words privacy and confidentiality. Privacy and confidentiality are not synonymous. Privacy, on the one hand, is the right and power to control the information that others possess. It is also the right of individuals not to be physically exposed against their will. Confidentiality, on the other hand, is a duty of healthcare providers not to disclose certain information without the patient's consent. It is important to ensure both privacy and confidentiality during an adolescent visit because adolescents have issues that they won't divulge in the presence of their parents. It increases the trust between the adolescent and the health care provider. It also increases the willingness of the adolescent to seek care and utilize health services, and it decreases unnecessary stress and worry in the adolescent. There are three ways that a health care provider can ensure confidentiality and privacy. First, make sure that all office personnel follow office policies regarding confidentiality like patient identification, history, and PE forms, and brochures and information materials given. Second, assure the adolescent that the health care provider is required to maintain confidentiality except under specific circumstances. And third, Close the office doors when talking to the adolescent about sensitive issues and avoid intrusions. It is also important for healthcare providers to remember that in keeping information private, all confidential files should be kept in a safe place inside the health center. Do not share information with a parent or guardian on anything that the adolescent has confided in you without his or her consent. Do not discuss patient information to anyone outside of the walls of your interview room. Avoid discussing patient information in open areas, elevators, waiting rooms, and hallways. Do not leave messages through a voicemail or voice recorder unless the patient gives consent. Now that we already know how to keep the information confidential and private, here are the steps to keep in mind during an adolescent-friendly visit. Greet and introduce self to adolescent. Ask adolescent his or her name and ask him or her to introduce his or her companion. Discuss how visit is different from pediatric visit and explain the format of interview. That is, the health care provider will see the adolescent with his or her parent or adult companion first. Next, the health care provider will ask the parent or adult companion to step out in order for the healthcare provider to see the adolescent alone. And lastly, before the end of the consultation, the healthcare provider will call back the parent or adult companion. Discuss confidentiality and define its limits with both the adolescent and parent or adult companion. Gather data from adolescent and parent or adult companion. Remember that the adolescent should be the main source of information. Gather general data such as family, past medical, developmental, and immunization histories from the parent or adult companion. Negotiate to see the adolescent alone. 
Do a psychosocial assessment using the head's interview format. Do the physical examination. Discuss findings, plans, and follow-up with the adolescent and what will be disclosed to his or her parent or adult companion. Call the parent or adult companion back and summarize plans. Thank the adolescent and the parent or adult companion. But why is it important to see the adolescent alone? First, the adolescent is a primary historian. Second, seeing them alone ensures confidentiality and privacy. Third, to establish rapport. Fourth, it empowers the adolescent. Fifth, it allows the health care provider to discover other concerns. Sixth, it uncovers hidden agendas and risk-taking behaviors. And seventh, it facilitates better communication. What is the Confidentiality Clause for? Confidentiality Clause assures the adolescents that any information gathered will not be shared without their permission. Breach of confidentiality will only be done in the following situations. Harm to self, harm to others, abuse or neglect, and when laws are broken. Finally, always be ready with a form of words. Here is an example. I will keep our conversation confidential and will not pass information to your parents or anybody else unless you give me permission. But I may have to break confidentiality and inform your parents and other doctors if I find out that you plan to harm yourself or others and if you are experiencing physical or sexual abuse.